Hi everyone, my name's Brett Drummond. I'm an MS researcher, science communicator, and one of the co-founders of MS Translate. And before I get started, if you are watching this on YouTube, we do ask that you hit the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with all of the new video content that we're producing. We know that about 85% of people who watch our videos aren't yet subscribed, so please click that button and subscribe to our channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving a little bit of an update on some of the research that's been published around the COVID-19 pandemic for people living with multiple sclerosis. And so there's going to be two parts to this video. The first part, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what's known in terms of outcomes of a COVID-19 infection in people living with multiple sclerosis. And then I'm going to talk about some recent research that's been published around the responses to the COVID-19 vaccines in people living with multiple sclerosis. Now, it's important to remember that this information is changing constantly. And we've included a link in the description under this video to our website, which contains a number of other links to MS organization pages from around the world, where they're providing updated guidelines uh, for people living with MS throughout the pandemic based on recommendations from a large number of neurologists. So we encourage you to visit those pages as well to get the best information in your local area uh, that your MS organization may be providing. So in terms of outcomes of an MS, uh, outcomes of a COVID-19 infection in people living with multiple sclerosis, there have been some large studies that have been published on this. Now, obviously, we need to take into account um, that it took quite a while for there to be large enough numbers of people living with MS who had been infected with COVID-19 to be able to make these outcomes. But essentially what they've found is that people living with multiple sclerosis aren't really at any increased risk of having a severe outcome of a COVID-19 infection compared to the general population. So this was relatively reassuring news for, for people living with multiple sclerosis as obviously at the start of the pandemic, there was some concern justifiably um, that with a lot of people living with multiple sclerosis being on immunosuppressive medications, they may be at a greater risk of having a bad outcome from a COVID-19 infection. However, this was found not to be the case. There was some indication that people on uh, B cell therapies, so this is ocrelizumab or ocrevus and rituximab, may be at a slightly increased risk of having uh, hospitalization uh, from a COVID-19 infection than people on other uh, multiple sclerosis medications. However, that increased risk was slight and there has been some conflicting data on this. Uh, it's certainly not seen necessarily as a cause for concern. However, if you are worried about that, you could talk to your healthcare professional or your neurologist. However, importantly, uh, no people living with multiple sclerosis, regardless of the therapy uh, that they are currently taking, were seen to have an increased risk of death from a COVID-19 infection compared to the general population. If we move on to talk about the COVID-19 vaccines, there's obviously been a lot of work done on this uh, for people living with multiple sclerosis. And now that we're starting to see large amounts of vaccination happening around the world, we're starting to see some publications come out that show the response to these vaccinations. Now, it's important firstly to state that the guidelines from every MS organisation around the world that I have seen have suggested that the COVID-19 vaccines are safe for people living with multiple sclerosis, and they're certainly recommending that people living with MS do get them. Now, again, this is certainly an individual decision. It's something that should be discussed with your healthcare professional, but the consensus recommendations for people living with MS as a whole are that the vaccines are safe and should be uh, received by people living with multiple sclerosis. Now, we've seen a few studies, as I said, that have looked into what the responses are to these vaccines. And the first one on this was an Israeli study that looked at people living with multiple sclerosis who, had, who were currently not receiving any form of treatment, people on uh, cladribine or mavenclad, people receiving gelenia or fingolimod, and people receiving ocrelizumab or, or ocrevus. 
And so what they found from this is that people receiving no treatment or people receiving cladribine both had a very strong response to that vaccine. Now, when we talk about the response to the vaccine, essentially what we're looking at is the antibodies that are produced in response to receiving that vaccine. These antibodies are what's going to help provide protection uh, if you do become infected with COVID-19. And so people who hadn't received a treatment or people who had received cladribine had a really strong response similar to what we would see in the healthy population. Now, people on fingolimod or gelenia and people on ocrevus both had a much lower response. So they weren't generating those antibodies uh, in response to receiving the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, in this Israeli study, they were looking purely at people receiving the Pfizer vaccine. Now, this wasn't necessarily unexpected for people on ocreluzumab. We've seen with other vaccines that their response is slightly lower, and that's to be expected because it is a B-cell depleting therapy, and so their ability to produce antibodies is going to be slightly lower anyway. But so it was found that uh, the responses were lower in both of those groups, suggesting that two doses of the vaccine may not be enough to provide su sufficient protection uh, in those groups. Now, it's important to remember a couple of different things. One, on an individual level, the responses seen in those two groups was different. So some people did um, produce some sort of response. Others did uh, produce a much lower response. But on the whole, when they grouped all of the people together on those therapies, they found that the response was much lower. One thing that's been suggested is important to keep in mind when looking at this is the timing from the last dose um, of these therapies. And so obviously the longer since the last dose, the stronger the response that we expect to see. And so some of the guidelines that you'll see on those MS organization pages do now provide recommendations around the timing of the vaccine in relation to the timing of the medications. Now, those findings have since been replicated in other studies, and in particular, there's been an Italian study that has um, seen similar things showing that the responses in those groups was still lower. But what's been interesting is that, uh, in particular, there's been a study that's come out of America that's shown that while they also found that there was a much lower antibody response or B cell response to the COVID-19 vaccines in people on those therapies, what they found was that they were still generating a T cell response. Now, we know that T cells are particularly important when it comes to fighting viral infections. And so it's a little unclear at the moment as to whether or not uh, the T cells that are produced in term uh, after receiving this COVID-19 vaccine will provide a sufficient level of uh, protection upon infection with the COVID-19 um, virus. So this story, as I said, is continuing to evolve. What we know is that the antibody response generated uh, is lower in people on, on Ocrevus and on Gelenia. We've had a couple of studies that have shown that now. However, we are seeing that there is still a T cell response. And so these T cells, while we're not generating the antibodies, these T cells may be able to provide protection. We will continue to provide updates on this. We know that this is a really important topic. We know that Unfortunately, globally, we are still going through uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and numbers are still high around the world. Um, and so we know that it's important that people are getting access to this information in a really accurate fashion. If you do see something online related to, to multiple sclerosis and the COVID-19 infection or COVID-19 vaccinations, feel free to ask us questions around it. Unfortunately, there is a lot of misinformation on this topic. And so we know that it's really important that you are getting access to the best information possible. In terms of the COVID-19 vaccines, the last thing that we would say is that booster doses, so a third dose of these vaccines, uh, is now being recommended around the world and has certainly been recommended for people living with MS and people on uh, other immunosuppressive medications and a lot of places around the world know, now have this uh, as being accessible. So, as always, these are certainly questions to raise with your healthcare professional or your neurologist if you are concerned. As I said, if you do have any questions on any of the research that I've presented in this video, please feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I will make sure that I respond as quickly as possible. 
It's a really important topic. It's really important that we stay on top of all of the research and information that's coming out. We will do our best, but please do share anything that you find with us as well, and we'll be happy to provide our thoughts. In the meantime, uh, for all of our community and people living around the world, please do continue to stay safe, stay healthy, uh, and hopefully we do see an end to this pandemic uh, in the near future so that we can all go back uh, to a little bit of normality. Thanks, everyone.